captives for trade, generated fortunes, fueled wars, propped up governments, and enslaved millions, all because of their quick chemical fix. And yes, you probably know what chemicals I'm talking about if you read the title of the video already. It was the human desire for these three molecules, morphine, nicotine, and caffeine, that has resulted in the everlasting impact on society. Let's start with morphine. While nowadays the production of this drug is mainly associated with the Golden Triangle, the opium poppy, a papaverum somnia firm, which morphine is taken from, is native to the eastern Mediterranean regions and was originally used as a herbal medicine. It was not until the late 18th century that morphine was used for its hallucinogenic powers, mainly by artists, writers, and poets at the time to stimulate their creativity. Opium from which morphine is derived from contains 24 different alkaloids, morphine being the most abundant. In 1803, German apothecary Friedrich Sojourner was the first to isolate pure morphine from the poppy and named it the alkaloid Morpheus after the Roman god of dreams. Morphine works as a narcotic, numbing one's senses, which is why it is used in powerful painkillers. It achieves this effect by mimicking the actions of endorphins, which block the plant pain receptors. The chemical structure of morphine consists of a benzene ring, a quaternary carbon atom, two methylene groups, and a tertiary nitrogen atom. The combination of these features is known as the morphine rule. Other components that follow this rule are codeine and heroin. As you can see, the differences between the compounds are very subtle. Codeine has a methoxide that replaces the hydroxide, and heroin replaces the hydrogens of the two hydroxide groups, and morphine with the acetyl groups, which you can see here. Morphine's most notable role in history was its role in the opium wars. The opium wars were caused by trade between Britain and China. Previously, traders from Europe found little satisfaction in trading with China, as the only commodity China desired to be paid in was silver. However, the British East India Company discovered the Chinese sought after opium, thus they began trading it at Chinese ports. The Chinese government banned the trade of opium in 1839 by outlawing the substance. This led to the first opium wars from 1839 to 1842, when Britain declared war on China so they could start trading again. Britain, having the far superior advanced military won and China was required to pay large appropriations, including opening five ports to British trade and succeeding Hong Kong as a British territory. The second alkaloid that we'll dive into is nicotine, derived from the tobacco leaves. Before Christopher Columbus brought nicotine back to Europe, it was used by the Indians of South America, Mexico, and the Caribbean, mainly used during ceremonial occasions, smoked from pipes. Tobacco smoking quickly spread throughout Europe, even with the disapproval of Church and King James I of England. However, after a while, they accepted it as well. Tobacco contains 10 alkaloids, with nicotine being the largest. Nicotine works at first as a stimulant to the central nervous system and heart. However, when taken in a larger dose, it acts as a depressant. It achieves this by forming a bridge at the junctions between nerve cells. This initially heightens the transmission of neurological impulses. This is the stimulant stage. After a while, though, the connections are blocked since nicotine stays in that and prevents the nerve impulse from reaching the transmission sites. This is the depressant stage. As you can see here, nicotine shares a very similar structure to nicotinic acid and pyridoxin, commonly known as vitamin B6. While nicotine is poisonous, about 50 milligrams is a lethal amount. The other two chemicals are essential nutrients for our health. In fact, a long time ago in the Corn Belt states, many people didn't have a balanced diet and thus became nicotinic acid deficient. This gave them the disease pellagra, which symptoms included dermatitis, diarrhea, and dementia. Many people were locked away in mental institutes until doctors realized the culprit in that nicotinic acid to their diet. Lastly, let's move on to caffeine. Caffeine is the most common of the three, and I'm sure you can list a million beverages that contain caffeine right off the top of your head. However, it is also has other significant roles, such as preventing asthma, treating migraines, and other medical conditions. Caffeine, otherwise known as 137-triethylenepurine-26-dion, is very closely related to two other alkaloids, those being thiophylline, which is found in tea, and thiobromine, which is found in coca. They only differ from caffeine by missing a methyl group attached to the structure and are missing them in different places. Caffeine has been around since prehistoric times and its usage can be traced back as early as 1500 BC by the Mayan and Totec civilizations. Christopher Columbus was the first to bring coca plants back from the New World to Spain in 1502. Caffeine has made numerous appearances throughout history, such as its role in the Opium Wars and the American Revolution when the Boston Tea Party dumped cargo off British tea into the harbor.